understand how to be a billionaire. Meet Naveen Jain. Oh, hello, how are you? So, I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff here. The stuff from space. I probably have the largest collection of meteorites in private hands, and probably, probably uh, most museums. And this is something that I like to share with everybody, and the reason I'm sharing with you is because I want people who can't afford to have them to be able to see what they are like. I want them to be able, people to be able to touch them and people to be able to feel that same thing that I feel having these meteorites in my hand. This is really nice beast from the moon. So imagine you're holding in your hand a piece of moon. I mean, that is just unbelievable. So people talk about, you know, honey, I'll take you to the moon. I brought the moon to you. I mean, imagine that. Like, this particular meteorite fell last year in California. And I was watching the TV and I saw this woman holding this meteorite. And I contacted her and I somehow convinced her that it's in much better hand with me than with her. Because I think I, it could pay for her kid's college education, which is how I have it. Here's another meteorite that actually hit a woman minding her own business. And this thing from the sky fell through the roof and hit her thigh. This meteorite would be less valuable. Uh, but for the fact that it actually hit a human being on Earth. And it's just really fascinating. Naveen has a seemingly never-ending collection of rocks from outer space. He said they were worth over $9 million, a drop in the ocean for a man with a personal wealth estimated at $2.2 billion. Look, a beautiful burnt rock. But his fascination with space extends beyond his meteorite collection. Moon Express. Thank you. At a compound in Mountain View, California, internet billionaire Naveen Jain is hatching a plan that could make him the world's first trillionaire. Naveen, good to see you, my friend. Good. So, Naveen, the team is working hard as it usually is. Of course. Um, remember the left, we have our systems engineering team mm -hmm. doing all the mechanical design of the lander. Yes. And on the right, uh, we're doing all the avionics, so micro miniaturizing all of the electronics that goes into uh -huh. landing. Because you can't land without software, so of we have course, our guidance, course. navigation, and control team working in all the software. So we're going to land on the moon somewhere around here, close to where the Apollo spacecraft landed at the equator. How did you pick that area? Well, it's First of all, it's on the near side, so it's easily accessible from Earth. It's an area, the dark area are actually regions of lava plains, so they're not mountainous. Not so long ago, it was the Soviet and America superpowers that were locked in a race to land on the moon. Now it's Bob and Naveen who are leading the competition to mine precious metals from its surface. Are we still on track to land on the moon by 2015? We're still on track, Naveen. Initially, we thought the mission was going to cost us about $100 million. Do you think we can bring the cost down to, say, 50 to $60 million now? Yeah, even less. Yeah, even I less? Th I think the first mission will be under 50, and subsequent missions may be under 40. When would we be able to tell your honey that I want to take you to the moon? 10 years. 10 years. Not only will it be a honeymoon, but I can take my honey to the moon, and I think that'll be the killer. If you can do that, that's real business. <laughs> If we can go to the moon for $50 million and the cost comes down to 20, and we're able to bring back the things worth $500 billion, I don't care what anybody says, that's a great business. Somebody is going to create a trillion dollar industry in space, and we sure hope it's us. When you tell somebody what you're doing and they don't think it's a crazy idea, then you're thinking too small. So when you walk up to a party and people say, what do you do? Well, I mine the moon. Well, that's, that's crazy. Well, I'm thinking big, right? What do you do? Well, are you writing an app for iPhone? <laughs> How do you become a billionaire? Perhaps some of the answers can be found by watching Naveen go about his strict daily routine. 
I wake up about 4.30 and 5, and between 5 and 5.15, I am working on email, catching up on news, looking at the blogs, looking at the different opinions. Because people just don't sleep. I mean, they're working 24-7. Somewhere around the world, people are awake and working. So you're always constantly being bombarded with request information or just sometimes uh, news. And so in the morning, I wake up and I, uh, you know, take care of my mind. And then after that, I work out and that's taking care of my body. And then I do meditate before I go to work, so that takes care of my soul. You know, business is like a war. You have to be completely com prepared. And unless you have mind, body, and soul really all uh, ready for it, you just can't fight that battle. I do work very, very long hours, and I realize there is really no substitute. I mean, it doesn't matter how smart you are, and there is just no substitute for hard work. If you want to succeed in life, you have to be absolutely at your best. And the only way to be absolutely at the best is to give it 100% of yourself. commuter car, so I drive it every day to work. Most people buy car and keep it in the garage. I drive them every day. A lot of people assume that entrepreneurs take chances. Is that true? Not true at all. In fact, entrepreneurs actually hate risk. Only play the game that you can win. Money is a byproduct of doing things that you really enjoy doing. It is never a goal in itself. And it's like having sex and orgasm. You have to enjoy the process and not focus on the end goal. People actually who focus on end goal, like getting an orgasm, never get one. Following Naveen around on a typical working day, it's obvious that his big ideas attract other big ideas, and his interests stretch way beyond the information e-commerce world in which he's built his fortune. We're in the midst of building this. We're in the, you know, part of it's being built right here in Seattle. Hopefully by the end of this year, it's all gonna get put together, and we're gonna flight test it. So how, how many people, uh, two, two per? Yeah, it's pilot, astronaut, and you. Okay. We call it the right stuff experience. For Naveen, the billionaire formula is simple. What makes a successful person? They go out and solve big problems. So you know how to make a billion dollars? You solve a $10 billion problem. Having already made his billions, he now unashamedly wants to use his business brain to change our world. Let's focus on education, healthcare, energy, shortage of water, shortage of food, and I'm gonna tell you how innovation and entrepreneurship can solve each of these problems. Let's look at education. Imagine if you are able to use a $25 tablet and build some type of a game that's more effective than a private tutor, and it's more addictive than the most addictive video game. Think about it, one day, a child is gonna to come to the mother and say, mom, can I just play one more hour of math? Because I enjoy it so much. Naveen has a knack of putting people under his spell, making his mission to solve some of mankind's biggest problems seem plausible in space and on Earth. What if we can build an artificial intelligence system that can be used by a village girl? She'll be able to go door to door and able to diagnose the diseases where there are no healthcare, there's no hospitals, there are no doctors. These are big ideas that could turn a big profit, but some of them seem a bit far-fetched. What if we take a 3D printer on the moon and somebody can go out and send the DNA of a bacteria or a virus and we print it right there and leave it on the moon and watch it grow? Right. These ideas, they're a bit out there, aren't they, Naveen? Don't people think you're just a bit mad? Well, the point is that the reason they think it's mad because it's already, they don't know it's already happening. The things that used to be science fiction are now becoming science reality. Naveen's relentless enthusiasm, obsessive work ethic, and unquestionable self-belief are some of the building blocks of how to be a billionaire. And it turns out these qualities were forged in an intriguing childhood. Thank you. 
Naveen is a father of three who runs four companies and has his own space program. How do his children live up to that? My uh, oldest, when he was very young, one day he came to me and said, you know what, Dad, I'm going to make more money than you ever did. I actually sat him down and I said, you know, surprising you think of success in that way. Success is not about how much money you're going to have. Success is about how many lives you'll be able to improve. And if you really want to be more successful than I am, go out and improve more people's lives than I'm able to do in my lifetime. And that's what's going to make me proud of you. And he said, whatever, Dad. I was six years old when Dad started his first company. And at the age of seven, he was taking me on the road with him. And then when I got a little older, like 10, 11, he would start randomly throwing me on stage with him in the middle of a talk. He'd be like, hey, like, why don't you come up and give your thoughts? And you really had no choice <laughs> but to get up there and say what you thought. So it was a really interesting way to learn by fire, right? When he's 16, and he calls me. And he said, Dad, I, you know, I've been meeting my, lots of my friends who are at MIT and Harvard and Princeton. What if I brought the great mentors that you had for me, helping these young kids? If I could do that around the world, I'll be able to improve more people's life than you did. Would that make you proud? And I said, yes. And guess, guess what? That's when he started Cairo Society. And today it's world's largest entrepreneurial society. America needs to reinvent our economy. We need to refocus our entire national efforts on young entrepreneurs. How can we be pioneers that move the world forward? Naveen seems to be nurturing his children on a predetermined path to success. His 16-year-old son, Neil, is the youngest student ever to attend the Singularity University in the Silicon Valley. Entrepreneurship, it's just kind of like a way of life, really. You can't turn it off. And his 19-year-old daughter, Priyanka, who is studying at Stanford University in California, is making her mark in the world of social philanthropy. I have spent 18 years of my life taking for granted everything that I have. A great family, parents, mentors, an education, good health, things that millions and millions of girls around the world live without. My accomplishments in this world will never be measured by what, what I do. It will be actually measured by what our children are able to do. Naveen's boys have flown in from California for a rare opportunity to hang out with their dad. Well, there comes my rock star there, and he's on the phone. Being an entrepreneur is just a full-time job, seven days a week, 24-7. All right, let's go. I love taking a speedboat out on a full throttle. Sometimes you just got to let the stress out. Heads up that uh, we pushed an updated build. It's, you know, obviously it's still... You want them to work hard and sometimes you want them to just slow down a bit, but it's ne <laughs> never a balance. He saw me do the same thing. When the three of them get together, the conversation rarely strays from business and finding ways to change the world. We always talking about business. Either he's talking about my business or I'm talking about his business. If you're solving problems, you're doing good in the world. And if you're doing good and you're solving problems in the world, you're gonna make a shit ton of money. <laughs> if you can solve a problem that affects a billion people, and even if you only got a dollar out of each of those people, you'd still make you a billion dollars. Without doubt, the kids are a chip off the old block. But is their entrepreneurialism purely down to their privileged upbringing, or is it in their blood? Maybe the answer lies in Naveen's past. I grew up in India, and we were very, very poor. And we didn't have to be poor. My father had a pretty decent job in the government. He was a civil engineer, uh, overseer, responsible for building government buildings. India is an extremely corrupt society. My dad, in his humble wisdom, decided that he wants to be an honest man. He's just not going to take a bribe. Guess what happens? In government, you never get fired. You get transferred. Every six, nine months, that son of a bitch has to go. He's not taking money. Find somebody who takes money. <laughs> So we go to the most rural areas, and most of our education was done in places where there are no tables, no chairs, no whiteboard. You sat on the floor, you wrote on the floor. And despite all that, my sister went on to do a postdoctorate 
in applied mathematics. My brother has a PhD in computer science and a PhD in statistics. And I'm the least educated person with a degree in engineering from IIT and MBA. That is the kind of value system that constantly governs my life. Always looking back and seeing the humble background that you come from and how much you have achieved. Dreams. Humility is a sure sign of knowing when somebody has been successful. Because if you still have an iota of arrogance left in you, then you're still trying to prove something to yourself or someone else. That means you're still not successful. I think all on. You might think that billionaires are defined by their wealth, but they would argue wealth is a byproduct of big ideas. They're interested in fulfilling their dreams. And the crazier the dream, the better.